Welcome back to the workshop, guys. I'm Kyle, and we've got another Kyle here with us today. Kyle Crawford, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, Kyle's gonna help us take a deep dive into the Elite Sharpener, so let's dive in. Uh, my name's Kyle Crawford. I'm the brand manager for WorkSharp. I've been with the company almost 20 years and been intimately involved with every product that we've brought to market, which has been an absolute joy to work with customers and design engineers to create a really cool line of sharpening products. It's a highly impassioned space for me. Uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Ken Onion, a uh, knife making legend in yeah. the industry, uh, to develop this platform of uh, sharpeners. And in that time working with Ken, we wanted to enhance the original knife and tool sharpener feature set. So we developed the Ken Onion Edition. Mm -hmm. Variable speed, uh, variable angle, just a logical step up from the original knife and tool sharpener. But on that journey and working with Ken and all that time in his shop, we wanted more. We wanted to have a product that could speak to the knife enthusiasts who wanted to, to sharpen and grind and have a more hands-on controlled experience with a sharpening system. And we wanted to emulate that industrial level equipment that Ken and other knife makers yeah. are using in their shop. So we took that same form factor and we developed this attachment for the Ken Onion Edition. Yeah. Now this will retrofit right onto uh, the, the Ken Onion Knife and Tool Sharpener, or you can buy it complete as the Elite Bundle. Mm -hmm. So if you're already here, it's an easy step up, but it gives you a similar form factor in horizontal sharpening and grinding for the edge enthusiast. Yeah. And you'll hear us talk about the blade grinding attachment and the Elite as we go on. Really, what Kyle said earlier, you've got the Ken Onion, and then you've got the Elite Bundle where it all comes together. So if you hear us call it the Elite or the blade grinding attachment, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're able to accomplish here, Kyle, is we took that form factor of, of horizontal grinding, but we put some user aids into it. Mm -hmm. It can be intimidating to walk up to an industrial grinder without any angle control, or uh, you know, it's a lot of speed, it's a lot of power. So what we've done is the variable speed and the adjustable angles and some of the user aids here make it really easy to use. So it's a short learning curve to getting really optimal edges on any knife. So what we've got here is a one by 18 inch belt. Mm -hmm. And then the attachment just slides right onto the machine. Perfect. So one thing we wanted to do was not have a complicated process of setup and calibration and, and getting up and running. Mm -hmm. No tools required. We've got knobs quick releases. And what that allows us to do is have an angle adjustment mechanism so we can have edge angle control from 10 to 35 degrees. We're using a belt selection that's similar to what Ken is using in his shop. We stepped into the Norax family of belts. We have a very consistent cut rate, very low heat, and we can create a really high polished surface finish on the edge. Oh. So there's a grid for every task. You wanna shape and repair and reprofile, we can get that done all the way up to a stropping belt that will put a high polish edge. One of the most important user aids we put into the machine is the reference plate here. Mm -hmm. So with the angle being adjusted here in the, the sharpener, and what that's doing is just moving these pulleys to set that angle. But so we just approach the machine and I'll set it up here for a 20 degree. The machine is now gonna take care of all the geometry. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is establish the knife on this flat reference plate. And when I approach the belt, I just stay level, follow the curve of the knife. There's a few things that really enhance the sharpening experience that we just did there, and they're, they're subtle. But now I'm able to get two hands on the knife, Kyle. No longer am I in a guide one-handed. Yeah. Right. I have full control of the knife. And also, it's a touchless system. So I reference here, but the blade is never touching a guide face. So right. I can make sure I'm keeping my blade faces really clean and pristine. And I get to watch the burr form. Yeah. That's probably one of the most fun things about using this system is as I'm traversing the edge across the belt, I can watch the burr form. It's like a glint of light and I can just ride that burr all the way out to the tip. That's awesome. So I have a visual indication of my progression through the sharpening journey. Somebody might be watching and thinking like, man, I'm afraid I'm gonna mess my knife up. You know, are there any tips or tricks you might throw at them to make sure that they ensure that their knives are gonna be good to go as they use this? Absolutely, like any power tool, there's a learning curve. You know, if you have a compound miter saw or you buy a MIG welder, you're not doing perfect work the first time you plug right. it in. So right. this isn't a grip it and rip it. There's gonna be a learning curve. The best way to embrace that learning curve, Kyle, low speed, fine grit on a practice knife. Mount your stropping belt. It's 12,000 grit. You're not gonna be removing much material 
What you're doing there is working on the ergonomics, practicing making that move from the reference plate up to the abrasive surface. Mm -hmm. And use a low speed. It'll be quiet, smooth running. It feels very approachable. Cool. It's a great way to practice. Okay, another question I think the audience might have is uh, abrasive options. You mentioned we have a stropping kit. Um, what are the abrasive options for this system? When you buy the system, it's gonna come with six grits and that's gonna get you from 120 grit belt that we have on the machine here. That's your repair work, your reprofiling. Mm -hmm. um, that's gonna remove a lot of material. Then we move into uh, the Norax family of belts. So there's a three belt uh, progression there where you can shape, sharpen, hone, and refine the edge. Okay. And then we finish on a 12,000 grit micro mesh belt. Okay. It's, it's the equivalent of a leather strop. It's very, very fine, <laughs> but we're not done there. We also have the cloth stropping kit. So what we've done there is instead of leather, which can be a challenge, it stretches, it dries out, it needs moisturization. We found that the cloth belts uh, that we have here will hold a compound very well and strop a knife very quickly. So what we've done is in working with Norton, we basically had them make us the cloth backing belts that are the same as, as the, uh, the sharpening belts. There's just no abrasive on them. Yeah. And then we use the honing compound to charge the belt and then you can take your edges to the next level. Now we're talking like bumper chrome level finish, laser sharp edges. It, it's just a joy. Br bragging rights for sure, man. Bragging rights all day long. <laughs> and awesome. then when you visit the website, we have more belt choices. We have a stiff belt kit if you're looking for a little less deflection in the belt for a, a flatter grind. Uh, we have grits in between if you want a very fine grit progression all the way through the journey. Okay. Uh, and we even have some films uh, from alternate suppliers. So there's a lot more on the website, cool. but at the end of the day, the base kit that, that comes with the sharpener is enough to sh repair, shape, reprofile all the way to a laser sharp edge. Nice. What about um, speeds on this machine? What kind of variables do you have there as far as speeds, as far as that belt turning goes? My goal when I'm sharpening on this system is control and I feel most comfortable with that speed at, at a low, medium setting. I don't wanna feel hurried. I don't wanna feel like the machine is running really quickly where I have to get in, move fast, and get out. Sure. I'd rather Sense. make slower, more controlled strokes as I'm traversing the belt yeah. at a lower speed. What kind of blade types can you do with this machine? Is there any limitations there? Or? I haven't found a blade yet that I, I can't sharpen. Okay. And, and, and the reason is I have so much access to the belt. Right. I have all this surface area in the front, top, middle. I've got room on each side. Even uh, this model here, it can be a challenge in some knives. The blade is shallow. Mm -hmm. I've got a thumb stud yep. and the cutting edge goes well behind the thumb stud. Oh, well, yeah, right? yeah, it does. So on a knife like this, I can just come around to the side. I've got the full cutting edge up on the belt. My thumb stud is out of the way. As soon as I clear the thumb stud, I can come back around and follow the curve of the knife. Yeah. If I've got a karambit, I can just go the other way and just follow the curve around the other side. Beautiful. So as long as I can get to the edge to the belt, it can get sharpened. <laughs> That's awesome. One of the other cool features we added in here, Kyle, is adjusting the distance of the pulleys. It's a subtle feature, but what it allows us to do is essentially change how much the belt will deflect. And what that translates to is how much convex we're getting on the edge. Okay. And we recommend light pressure. Light for you, big strong guy, <laughs> probably a little more than light for me. So let's just settle on weight of the blade. Sure, Okay. That makes sense. I'm not pushing into the belt, mm -hmm. right? Weight of the blade, gentle touch. But when I move these pulley centers, it will impact how much that belt is allowed to flex. Yep. So right now we're on the narrow setting and you'll see I can just move that pulley back. Yep. Spot so on most of my EDC stuff, I like a little bit of a flatter grind. That way I've got a really, really clean slicer and an incredibly keen, sharp edge. Mm -hmm. But my outdoor knife, for example, I'm batoning, I am beating that yeah. knife up hard, Yeah. right? So I want a little more convex on there. A little bit more material behind the cutting edge is gonna give me a stronger edge. Sure. So I'll just quickly move that back to the further setting. A little bit more convex and I get higher edge retention on a heavy use outdoor work. Knife. That's cool. Subtle but cool feature that really lets you start to customize the edge you want, 
on on the knife you have. It's not just edge angle. It's it's profile. It's grit. We now just opened up a wealth of choices to customize the edge to exactly the knife and the application. Um, we talked earlier about how this can do almost anything. I've got a cram it here. Great. You up for the challenge? Oh, absolutely. All right, Kyle. For sure. Take it away, buddy. So in looking at looking at the edge, one thing that's important to me as a knife enthusiast, and I know it's important to you guys, you don't want to remove any more material than you have to, right? We're just wanting to create a sharp edge. This edge isn't damaged. There's no need to use 120 grit. Right. You okay with that? I think, I think so, we, yeah. we can coach the method <laughs> and get the job done, but we can do it on a finer grit belt and just touch it up. I'm going to use the X22, which is equivalent to about a thousand grit belt. Okay, I'm gonna get myself set up here. Tracking right here on the side, so when I, when I spool up the machine, uh, I can just quickly track here, okay. get my belt perfectly centered, then I'm ready to go. Okay. I'll also set the speed when I do that too, to get that low speed we were talking about earlier. And all the same rules apply. You, know, you want to place the knife, and you want to come around and stop on the tip. But you can see I have so much access to get around that curved edge yeah. on the karambit. Not a problem at all. One thing I noticed is you were only using one finger on the knife while you were doing that. Is that just to keep light pressure or is there more to it than that? Stand horizontal is, is key, okay. right? When we start on the reference plate, you know, we want to stay horizontal when we sharpen. I find that having two hands on the knife gives me better control. It does, it's really doing two things for me. One, it helps me stay level. Sure. Right. I can feel when I start to wander. Okay. Right? So I want to, I want to use this to stay perfectly horizontal when I'm coming around. But what it also does is it gives me a fulcrum. Ah. Uh, right. Yeah. On a different shape blade, you know, on the karambit, I'm still, you know, keeping horizontal and idling around. But if this knife is the other way, it gives me a perfect fulcrum. Sure. To pivot the knife. So it's just slow, steady, controlled motion as I'm traversing across the belt. Give you really consistent results. Cool. All right. Um, this is one of my favorite knives, the turret. Uh, it's a pretty hard steel. Um, is there any considerations when you're dealing with some tougher steels like the uh, SV30 that's on this one here? Yeah. One of the things I've noticed sharpening knives over the years is the belt selection that comes with the machine will sharpen any blade steel. Okay. That, that's not the issue. The challenge can be in feeling for the burr. Ah. Some of your lesser uh, import stainless steels, um, they tend to be a little softer and the material will create a burr, a more prominent burr. So you'll really feel it. You know, as we learned in an earlier episode, you can get a burr, strong enough burr to hang a fish hook on it. Yeah. These modern super steels, they don't burr quite as heavily. Um, S90V, for example, it can be a real challenge to feel that burr yeah. when you're progressing through the sharpening journey. So it's important to really train your finger uh, to feel for that burr when you're sharpening super steels. Okay. And it may take a little longer. You know, an S30V, S45VN, S90, M390, these steels job is to be tough and um, have high edge retention and be abrasion resistant. Yeah. Its job is to not wanna be, <laughs> you know, ground down and compromised. Right. So they're not gonna burr quite as heavily. Sure. So once you get that burr finger, um, really trained in to feel that microburr on a super steel, no problem. I can see the burr come up. <laughs> okay, I can feel it. Run your finger away, All right. away from that. Give that burr a feel. Oh yeah, it's there. It's present but it's not quite like it would be if we were on, you know, a, a lesser steel. Yeah, I was expecting, you know, this big bird to be sitting up there, but because of this steel type, it, it's there, but it's not like it's grabbing my, my thumb as I go across. We wouldn't way, be hanging a fish hook on that exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But watch this. I'll fire up the machine again, and I'm going to start here right at the choil, and watch that burr pop up, and you'll just see it like a glint of light riding all the way out to the tip. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> Yep. 
Isn't that cool? It's awesome. <laughs> it's also a great way when you can see the burr, you can now watch it go down the cutting edge. If there's a nick, a chip, or a flat spot, you'll see the gap where the burr forms when you're creating the edge. Yeah. So now you you know you've got more work to do because you're not creating that burr glint all the way down the cutting edge. Such a more intimate experience when it comes to what you're doing under your knife when you're using a system like this. That Very It's just something cool that I dig. So yep, me thanks too. for sharing that, man. Yep. I've got this knife and I dropped it and the tip is obviously bent. I don't know if Steven can see that, um, but there's not as much of a tip there anymore. So uh, I was hoping you might be able to repair that. And this is a little softer steel, so we might be able to see that burr pop a little bit more on that one. You up to the challenge? Oh, absolutely. All right, These are fun. On. Repair is one of the, the most fun spaces here. Nicks, chips, broken tips, all so easily done. And I'm confident we'll be able to get that burr to come up uh, so we can see it come all the way down the cutting edge. Cool. Accidents happen, Kyle. It's okay. <laughs> I'm here to back you up, buddy. Hey, Kyle. Made short work of that. Wow. <laughs> so get your tip back. And one of my goals when I repair or reprofile, Kyle, my goal is to turn that knife back to you and you never even know it happened. So yeah. I'm wanting to keep that same factory grind profile. And you hold the knife up, you're like, looks like it never happened. Yeah. Yeah, you can just see the bevel come to life as you're going across that belt. It was cool to watch. Yeah, it's great to be able to watch that burr form. And as I'm reworking the tip, I know when I get all the way out to the tip, because I can see the burr come out. I've reestablished the tip, get really fine points on the middle of that belt. Yep. All right, Kyle, so you just ground uh, four different knives and I only saw you use like two belts. Is there a reason behind that? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did. Part of that is just the expediency to just show what we're up to, Kyle, but you don't have to use every belt on every knife. Okay. It's really down to your personal choice. Let's take this knife, for example. I like the factory grind uh, that came on this knife. If I want to emulate that, I can rough it in with a, a coarse belt mm -hmm. and then just knock the burr off. So I use two belts. Sure. What that's going to give me is an incredibly keen, sharp edge, but it's going to be toothy. Yeah. You're going to see the striations in, in the cutting edge. And that's going to be, that's a good work knife. Yep. High edge retention. Uh, those micro teeth are really going to bite. Right. Yeah. That's a great EDC edge. Two belts. Makes sense. I mean, I've got my bench I just got for Christmas and you can definitely see the striations all the way down it from the factory, um, which doesn't say it's not, it's not sharp. It is sharp. It's just a toothy edge um, that was intentional from the factory that is a sharp knife, but serving a purpose to be able to do all kinds of different mediums that you're cutting into and things like that. So yep. it makes total sense. Now my, my boning knife, for example, I want that knife to glide through raw proteins just like a scalpel right right i want a high polish edge at a low angle so a knife like that i will go through every grit mm -hmm. so that i'm refining all the way through to a very high polish edge sure. there's not going to be as much tooth in it so it's not going to bite into you know the, a tomato for example sure. but you know if i'm filleting fish or, or boning out meat it is really really sharp yeah. and it just glides through material. So really what I'm getting to is you're now at choice. Yeah. You want a toothy edge for your EDC knife. Do you want a high polish edge, uh, you know, for your kitchen? Um, and you can do different edges on the same knife. Now we're getting in, into like next <laughs> level nerddom, right? right? Like let's take this knife for example, because it's perfect example with the double plunge. Yep. If this, if this knife is mine, I'm going to sharpen this with a differential edge. My high force cutting back here towards the handle, that's where I'm, you know, heavy Forking. cuts, yeah. right? That's the way the knife is built. The primary is thicker back here. Right. It's made for heavier work. I'm going to leave a toothy edge back here. So it's going to bite. It's going to have high edge retention. But out to the front where the edge thins, I'm going to refine that. I'm going to use two, maybe three grits and get a higher polish. Because that's where my detail work is, yeah. right? 
I'm out here and I want this to be really keenly sharp for my more fine cutting, but I got a workhorse back here. So just how I'm able to sharpen the edge differently using different grits, it's like having two knives in my pocket. So there's no limits. There's no rules. Yeah. It's your knife. It's your experience when you're using it. How do you want it to perform? All right, so now we're getting into beyond sharpening, all the cool stuff that this thing can do. Uh, what do you got for us here, Kyle? I brought my kit. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> all right, I've had so much fun, not only developing and just playing with this sharpener over the years, being a nerd and enthusiast, uh, I wanna start playing around and, and try making some knife kits. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is, you know, just bought some some knife kit blanks. That's awesome. Some slabs of uh, micarta or G10 with some liner material and grind them the way I want them. Glue them up, grind the handles in. That knife, for example, all done on the blade grinding attachment. And you just ordered all this separate? Correct. It showed up and you put it all together? Yeah. You know, I, I bought a, a leather sheath. Why not strop on the, the back tang? That's smart. And then same, just starting with a, a knife blank. Glue it up. I even put the, the patina on there. That's a 1095 steel. So it's a nice high carbon steel that will accept a, a patina. And this was my starting point. Okay. So you can see I just start with a blank. Yep. And then I get some, get some scale material. You know, this is just something I have in my my kit, but I can rough in those scale oh, yeah. shapes, get them glued up. And it's it's a lot of fun. So, you know, in, in this, I was, I was playing around with, you know, I, I like a locator on, on a knife and this, this didn't have one. So I just ground in this radius. Oh yeah. So that now I have a spot for your thumb where my thumb goes. Yeah. This had a little bit different radius out here uh, towards the tip on that worn cliff. I'm like, no, I don't like that. I want it, I want it different. So I'm able to customize and grind. And That's then this one, for example, also, I like spine filing. It's just a cool <laughs> detail, right? So I thought, how could I create this spine filing effect all the way around the knife? That yeah. way I've got good grip. I got that locator I was talking about. So all I've done there is right up here on the top pulley. I just marked these, you know, uh, with a Sharpie, yeah. you know, every half inch. And I came up here and I just nick it off the side and then come back down the other. But I was able to create all those spine filing details awesome. and ground in the aluminum insert. It just felt naked uh, with the hole in the middle. Yeah. Because of course I had already gone a different direction to use, you know, paracord yep. on, on a different style. And I thought, got one with a handle, got one with paracord. Let's play around with some spine filing details and grinding in that piece of aluminum to, to epoxy in the center. So what's a blank like this run you? I mean, if you were to kit out the, one of these knives. This kit with the knife. sheath and the materials and the liners, I don't have, I don't have 30 bucks in these materials. That's awesome. So the point of entry to get into hobby knife making is really approachable. You're in 200 bucks on your grinder and your sharpening system. You're in $50 or less for a knife kit including you know, premium materials, and you're on your way. Another fun thing that can be done, Kyle, this was a, a knife I've had for years. I use it as a gardening knife. It's just a great outdoor carry, but the scales broke. Well, man, the knife is great. The yeah. sheath is holding up well. I'm unwilling to let go of this knife. Get some handle material. So I ground these in. I've got some really cool burlap. Um, material here that they made a, a handle material. I got my two nickel pins. That's beautiful. And, and you'll notice how I ground it so that I still have the reveal of the steel around the knife. Yeah. So I've got great grip. Yep. So I do all of that here because I've got such great surface area. And what I'll do is I'll just show you. I'll just use the fine belt so we can walk through the motion. Sure. But I do all my handle work before I glue up because I want to make sure these front radiuses match and the back radiuses match. So what I'll do is I'll pin these together 
and then I grind them symmetrically. Oh wow. So I'm working, working like this with the scales off and I can come in here and create those, those top radiuses. You'll notice this pulley diameter is about the same diameter yeah. as, your, as your finger grabs. So I can come in here off this top pulley and grind in each one of those, those finger reveals. Uh -huh. So I get the scales about where I want them before I glue up. And then I can keep that nice reveal all the way around. And when I roll the knife end over end, it's symmetrical, even, and it fits my hand. So right. I keep grinding and holding and grinding and holding until it feels comfortable. And that's what's cool about doing it yourself is, a, you know, bigger hands, smaller hands, whatever you got, you can customize your knife to fit your hand. I mean, obviously you're, you're able to have that, that control, which is really cool. So. It's a lot of fun. So you've got this front plate here. Mm -hmm. Where would you incorporate that? This is a space I will use. I use it on this knife, for example. This was one of those, uh, it was like a butcher knife. You know, they, they tend to swell and get really big mm -hmm. out here at the end. Yeah. It was okay. Didn't love it. And it didn't, didn't feel like the knife I wanted yet. With this 90 degree plate out on the front, what I'm able to do, Kyle, is use that reference plate and come in and I'll start right up here where the handle matches and just pull across that 90 degree plate and grind that spine down. And I'll spend a lot more time in this area here so that I can start to impact that, that radius and that curve sure. and get the profile I want. But this is gonna give me a very consistent, flat, sharp edge sure. on the spine of my knife. Another great use for that is your bushcraft knives, your outdoor knives, where you want that very crisp edge for your ferro rods and your fire strikers, Smart. right? Medium grit, one quick pass, and I can get that really rough bird edge on there for my outdoor uh, fire striker. Very knife. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So whether I'm profiling, whether I'm creating a feature, an intentional feature like that on a specific knife, it just gives me more work area. So I've got a 90 degree plate out front. I've got my primary sharpening area. I've got this slack belt area where I can be polishing out and radiusing off my really handles. Yeah, and it, it will just wrap, wrap to the material. Even if I'm fixing tips, you know, I can come in here and I'll ride that pulley and then just stop right up here on the tip. Okay. You know, so that's another way if, if I'm not as comfortable on that 90 degree plate to reprofile into a tip, I can just come right up off the top. Again, there's no, there's no rules. Right. What do you want to achieve? What grit? How do I get the, the material onto the abrasive? And it's about endless. Yeah. And this is just play, man. Yeah. Low cost, high fun. All right, Kyle, so you show me all the things, all the knives you can sharpen on this. What about my axes and my lawnmower blades and all my other tools that uh, I would think you can sharpen on this, or, or maybe you can't? What, what's the story there? Absolutely. This is my, this lives on my bench top uh, in my shop. Okay. If I have a tool that I can bring to the abrasive belt, as we just talked about, of course I can sharpen it. Mm -hmm. But it's not always uh, the way I want to get the task done. Sure. So that's why the original attachment on the Ken Onion Edition still delivers features and value you know, beyond the blade grinding attachment. Right. Scissors, right? I got my scissor slot here. That's gonna give me that consistent, precise grind on all my scissors and shears. Can I sharpen them here? Yeah. Faster, easier, more consistent with the guide. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? That's... And another great benefit, Kyle, is I can't always bring my workpiece to my bench top to my blade grinder. But with the original attachment, I get the sharpening guide off, edge guide out of the way. Now I've got my handheld grinder, right? right? So now I'm on my mower blades, I'm on my axes, my hatchets. I now have a tool I can bring to the job. Yep. And I have the same belt assortment. So my 120 grit for shaping and repair, maybe I want a high polish, super keen edge on my trowel, Kyle. I can do it, <laughs> right? There's no limits. All right, Kyle, I just want to say thanks for coming on with us today and showing us everything the Elite can do. Um, I'm sure we probably didn't even cover every bit of it, but boy, did we get a lot of information. And I'm, I'm sure I learned something and I'm sure our viewers did too. I want to thank you guys for joining us. If you've got questions, Kyle is our brand manager as we discussed on the front end, which means he's representing your voice. So leave a comment below if you've got questions, if you've got suggestions, we get in there, we read those. 
Also, we've got this hat that we're giving away. And if you leave a comment, it automatically gets you entered to win this hat. It's signed by Ken Onion himself. Pretty cool deal. So leave, leave a comment and we'll pick someone out of the comments there. Again, thanks for watching. Um, if you wanna like the video, please do. Uh, you can subscribe and we'll leave you links for those somewhere probably here or here. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.